Hi everyone and Merry Christmas to you all. Winter is here and with it snow is also coming to airports around the Northern Hemisphere. You might be wondering, how do you get aircraft that look like this ready to fly again? Today we are going to take a look at aircraft de-icing. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any future aviation videos. Welcome to Airspace Explained. Winter is not an easy time for aviation. Many kinds of adverse weather phenomena accompany the winter season. Storms, rain, fog and snow. Snow is really bad for air travel since it hampers operation in many ways at once. Runways and aprons have to be cleared, sometimes there is low visibility and of course aircraft have to be de-iced. To understand why we even need to de-ice airplanes, let's take a brief look at aerodynamics. Airplane wings are shaped to make air move faster over the top of the wing. When air moves faster, the pressure of the air decreases, so the pressure on top of the wing is less than the pressure on the bottom of the wing. The difference in pressure creates a force on the wing that lifts the wing up into the air. The shape and structure of the wing here is very important and closely optimized to the needs of the respective aircraft. If the wing shape or surface property is distorted by ice, it may not produce an appropriate amount of lift. Therefore, planes are regularly de-iced during wintertime. The other parts of the aircraft are de-iced so that no parts of ice or snow will fall off the airplane during the takeoff roll. This might damage parts of the airplane. In flight, other measures against ice are taken, such as heating the leading edges of the wing with hot air from the engines. Now let's see how it all actually works. When I started my career as a first officer, one flight instructor memorably told me that de-icing fluid contains so much alcohol, it would make a college frat boy weep of joy. That alcohol would lower the freezing point of water on the aircraft surface sufficiently to avoid icing. As it turns out, the basic idea behind his explanation was true, but not the chemistry. The icing fluids are mostly comprised of ethylene glycol or propylene glycol, compounds frequently used in antifreeze. They are sprayed onto the aircraft by specially trained personnel operating special trucks that have sort of a crane cabin mounted on top. From there, they have a great view of the wings and the top side of the plane, so that they may remove snow and ice as completely as possible. They can also remotely drive the truck under them from up there, so that's pretty cool. The icing fluids come in one flavor, nasty, but four different colors and purposes. In commercial aviation, only type 1 and type 4 are commonly used. Type 1 is orange in color and is used to remove ice and snow from the aircraft structure. It is mixed with water to a certain ratio depending on the weather conditions and then heated and sprayed onto the aircraft. Type 4 is bright apple green in color and is used if there is not only ice and snow in the aircraft, but if there is still snow or rain falling with temperatures close to freezing. It is used after Type 1. Type 4 is used to protect the aircraft from snow and ice accumulation for some time. This is called the holdover time, or short, hot. Depending on the fluid mixture, type of snow or rain and the temperature, this holdover time can vary greatly and the table has to be consulted. For a standard winter day with moderate snowfall, temperatures around freezing and 100% type 4 fluid used, one finds a holdover time of 1 hour and 15 minutes to 2 hours and 5 minutes. To be safe, most operators use the lowest of those two numbers, so one could say the aircraft is likely to be protected for at least 1 hour and 15 minutes in these conditions. All those fluids are designed to stick to the aircraft up to a certain airspeed. They are intended to be blown away after takeoff in order to not adversely impact aerodynamics or most ironically freeze at very cold temperatures experienced in flight. No de-icing fluid available for the broad market could cope with these values. So there you have it, now you know how and why planes are de-iced. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video, enjoy your holiday season and make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes. See you in the next one.